All right, so this is the second AP practice exam, and I just wanted to run through the solutions with you to make sure that you feel totally comfortable and ready. So we have a graph of position versus time, and we're assuming that there's positive acceleration. So what I want to do is actually run through the description of each graph. So this is a graph of an object that's not moving. This object is moving forward at a steady speed. This one's moving backwards at steady speed. And just to be clear, this object is starting slowly and speeding up, going backwards. So it turns out the one object that actually meets our description is object now, in class, we discussed distance and displacement. And we said that displacement is going to be x final minus x initial. And so I started at 3 meters, and I wound up at 5 meters below where I started. Um, so my displacement, um, again, actually, let's be really clear. I started 2 meters above the ground, and I ended up on the ground. So my displacement is going to be 0 minus 2, which is x final minus x initial. And that's how I'm getting 2 meters below as my answer. And then for number 3, we've done this problem quite a few times, but I just want to kind of refresh your memory. This is a kinematics question, and we're, we almost always throw in the mass as a distractor. Um, so the distance the car has traveled, so we'll say x is 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. This is 0. v naught is 0, so that makes this whole expression 0. So a lot of times when I do these problems, you'll just see me start with x equals 1 half a t squared, because I've done this part in my head, um, usually. So this is going to be 1 half. Now to get the acceleration, I'm going to use v equals a t plus v naught. Um, and that's going to be 30 meters per second equals a times 6. So a is 5. So I have 1 half times 5 times t squared, which is 6 squared. So this is going to be 1 half times 5 times 36, which ends up being 5 times 18. And that's how I'm going to end up getting 90 meters. So that's number 3. Question number 4. Um, this is the standard if A pushes B, B pushes back on A with exactly equal force. Then for number five, let's be careful with this one. I'm going to go ahead and actually set up a free body diagram. So I believe I told you to regard this direction as the positive direction. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's going to sound really gross when you watch this video later. So then we're going to have um, this 0.9 kilograms and this 0.6 kilograms. I'm very excited. Six. Just label that. So I've got a tension going up. I've got... I'm going to actually do the math right now. So this weight is going to be 0.9 times 10, which is 9. So I'm going to actually write 9 newtons here. And then for this 0.6, I've got a tension going up. Similarly, its weight is 6 newtons. So this is what this equation is going to look like. Um, I'm calling this direction positive, which makes this direction positive for the 0.6. So when I look at my equations for the 0.9, I'm going to get 9 minus t equals 0 0.9 times a. And for the 6 kilograms, it's going to actually end up being t minus 6 equals 0 0.6 a. Now when I put these two equations together, I'm actually going to add them. That'll eliminate the tension. That's actually going to give me that 3 equals 1.5 times a when I combine these equations. So a ends up being 2 meters per second squared. By the way, if you wanted to go ahead and get the tension, then you go back and substitute. So to get the tension, I would say, also let's also get t. Well, I know that t minus 6 equals 0 0.6 times a. I got a is 2, so t minus 6 equals 1.2. And um, t minus 6 equals 0 0.6 times a. And since a is 2, 0 0.6 times a is 1.2. That's going to be a tension of 7.2 newtons, coincidentally. So that's questions 1 through 5, and in the next video, I will take a look at questions 6 through 10.